Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010, let us help you. If you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470 and ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're the type of person that gets gets a kick out of helping other people, if you uh, making uh, helping other people get off their meds and feel better, and just be healthier and have more energy, puts a smile in your face and a song in your heart. Longevity is an ideal business opportunity for you. You can make some money and help change the world at the same time. 866-735-2470. For more information, 866-735-2470. Or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out truthnourishment.com for enzymes, protein powders, and various and sundry shopping items. We're adding new ones all the time. We also have a skin blog, a skin health, I'm sorry, we have a health blog at truthnourishment.com. We've got a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, that's where I keep all my skin health formulations. Truth treatments, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon, water, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products. Everything your skin needs and nothing it doesn't. Truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about, uh, we're talking about the stress response and diagnosis, and I call it the tyranny of diagnosis. Diagnosis being, a, you know, we, we take for granted, you go to the doctor, you sit, on the, you sit in the chair, and he takes your blood pressure and does, I haven't been to the doctor in a long time, but he takes your blood pressure and weighs you and does all the things doctors do. And then you sit down and you tell him your symptoms. And then he comes up with something called a diagnosis. And we just assume that that's the way medicine should be done. And that's the way, that's the right way to do things. But there's a lot of people who question that, including myself. And I've been talking about this for years. I call it the tyranny of the diagnosis. This is the idea that we are our diagnosis. And based on our diagnosis, that's the kind of health protocol that we get. And that, my friends, is not in our health interest, but it's in a corporate protocol centralization of health power interest. And you hear this in, in politics now, because everybody was screaming about health care costs. What they really mean when they talk about the high cost of health care is who's supposed to pay for it. Not we're going to lower the cost of health care. They're just changing who's going to pay for it. The idea that you need insulin for your diabetes and if they, hold, they make the insulin expensive, that you're going to die is not fair. And it's maybe it's well-meaning by Bernie Sanders, who says insulin is like oxygen. 
but it's not he needs pharmaceutical insulin is like oxygen and it but it's it's ignorant first of all but he can be forgiven for being ignorant he's just a politician smart politician but he's still a pol- just a regular guy he's not a he's not a healthcare professional he's not a biochemist he doesn't understand the human body we should have people who understand the human body and who have human beings interests in mind talking about healthcare not doctors not not necessarily doctors I don't like ripping on doctors, but not necessarily doctors, not necessarily uh, the head of the FDA. Do you think the head of the FDA cares about your health? Do you think lobbyists in Washington care about anybody's health? The tyranny of the diagnosis is about diagnosis supporting the status quo, the centralization of power. And that's one, th- centralization of power is, is always gonna screw the individual, but it's when, when it's the centralization of health power that really screws the individual. And make no mistake about it, it's about power. It's about control. This is from uh, the book, The Tyranny of Diagnosis, Charles E. Rosenberg, Harvard University. Quote, the social power and utility, that means how functional it is, inherent in naming diseases is demonstrated in medicine as well as in the wider culture. The social power inherent in naming diseases. For example, the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania reinvented as a, this is quoting here, reinvented as a component of the corporate healthcare system. Do you hear that? The hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. You wouldn't think that was part of the the pharmacomedical model invented to keep control and centralized power in terms of health. It sounds all, you know, great for the for the good of the people. When we hear hospital, we think for the good of the people. Now, I'm not talking about the nurses or even the doctors for that matter. I'm talking about the hospital corporations. Anyway, quote, for example, the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania boasted of having created 40 evidence-based and cost-containing practice guidelines for disease management. I'm quoting here, folks, for disease management, comprehensive and and regularly updated protocols intended to codify, I mean, put it into code, memorialize it, and mandate the practitioner's adherence, the practitioner's adherence, that means the doctor has to do it, to formal diagnostic treatment prevention and referral Plans. What are those plans? They're insurance plans. They're money plans. They're protocols. When you go to the, to the University of Pennsylvania or any other Kaiser or, or any other uh, uh, health clinic or HMO, you're not getting a treatment for you. You're getting a treatment for them. What's cost effective? What's profit intensive? It's a scam from day one. And if you participate in it, you have no one to blame but yourself because we have to become aware of what's going on in the world of health and what's going on in the world of body. Now, present company excluded, of course, because you're listening to this program and you find this program interesting. I'm talking to the vast majority, the millions and millions, the tens of millions, the hundreds of millions of Americans who have bought into this pharmacomedical model lie, this deceit. Now, we've been talking about fibromyalgia. We, we talked about diagnosis. Then we start talking about fibromyalgia because, to me, fibromyalgia is a classic example of taking control of your health and uh, of taking the control of our health away from us and putting it into some diagnostic, diagnostic-driven centralized power. Fibromyalgia is muscle pain, period. The question is, is why, is your, why are all your muscles, why do they all feel like they're burning? Or your, your body feels like it's burning. It's sore everywhere. It's tender everywhere. This is, I can only imagine the misery the fibromyalgia patient is going, with, going through because I, I know what it's like when I work out, over, when I overwork or overtrain or I don't stretch or something, you know, the next day if I don't loosen up, my body, my, the part of my body that I worked out feels really sore. Can you imagine having that all day at 24-7, head to toe? That's fibromyalgia. And there's nothing the doctor can do for you except you will probably get Prozac or some serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, SSRI drug. It's not a mental issue. It's a toxicity issue. And the fact that most of the patients, most fibromyalgia patients are women is a major clue. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back. 844-236-1610 is our number right after this. 
Okay, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity business, longevity products, or a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, we want to be your go-to source on all things health and, nutri- and nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and our Truth Shopping nutritional products, I guess you'd say. We're always looking for new products at truthnourishment.com, truthnourishment.com, truthtreatments.com, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can find truth products, blog posts, news stories, longevity products on all our websites. And don't forget to join or click on the Join the Team link and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. I will be doing a talk today at my lab, 2240 Curtis Street in Denver, if you're in the Denver area. I'll be doing a talk on photo aging, and uh, my esthetician will be doing, uh, or showing, uh, doing some demonstrations and protocols, and I'll be doing a talk on photo aging. That's, uh, well, we, we suggest professionals, but if you're out there in the Denver area and want to come by, it'll be uh, noon. We'll have some freebies, some freebies that we'll be giving away, my new enzyme masks. These are available for estheticians. If you're an esthetician, you're a spa owner, or you're in the salon business, we're looking for outlets, places to carry our Truth Skin Health products. You can, uh, uh, you can send an email to ben at Truth Treatments or support at truthtreatments.com. And if you are in the Denver area, 12 noon at our lab, 2240 Curtis Street, the Truth Skin Health Lab, 2240 Curtis Street in Denver, and that's at noon today. And uh, I will be talking actually about, let me talk about some general stuff about photo aging, but I'm also going to be talking about estrogen and photo aging. Did you know estrogen, estrogen predisposes you to photo aging? We've been talking about fibromyalgia, and uh, before I went to break, we said most people who get fibromyalgia patients are women. Most people get autoimmune issues are women. Most people who have hypothyroidism and depression are women. There is a, seems to be a built-in problem associated with femininity involving the immune system and the inflammatory system and the toxicity system. And whenever that happens, whenever you have a gender difference in disease states, one of the things you want to, especially if it's a huge gender difference, like with autoimmunity or fibromyalgia, it's huge. It's like 80% are women. Uh, you, you have to suspect the quintessential female hormone estrogen. Now, I'm not saying only, only women make estrogen. Estrogen is made in male cells as well as female cell, cells. It's not just a feminizing hormone. In fact, it's, it's primarily a, a life management hormone as we were talking. Well, it, it's a reproductive hormone, true, but it's also a life management hormone as we've been talking about for a long time. It's a stress hormone. And guess what? Estrogen predisposes you to sun damage. We'll be talking about that today. Estrogen predisposes you to inflammatory conditions of the, of the skin. It, and sun damage is a long-term result, long-term result of an inflammatory condition. This idea of long-term result is really important too. Fibromyalgia and photo damage and autoimmune diseases and, and um, most, the vast majority of chronic long-term health challenges, I think I could say all, take take a long time to develop, years, decades. The body does not break down quickly in terms of chronic long-term degenerative issues. Now, if you get burnt or radiation or some dramatic emergency happens to you, that's one thing, but you gotta neglect your needs. You gotta neglect the body's needs for a long time for, uh, for ill health and disease to show up. That's amazing, folks. You, gotta, you have to neglect the body for, for decades. That's how resilient and how adaptive the body is. It's amazingly resilient and adaptive. For us to get sick means a lot of abuse for the body. And guess what? It doesn't happen all of a sudden. The, the breakdown doesn't happen all of a sudden to the point where you notice it. It breaks down gradually, slowly. So the body's very resilient. It takes a long time for it to break down. And when it does break down, it breaks down gradually, slowly, and it involves changes in how the body communicates, in, in the signaling in the body. The body's made up of 100 trillion cells, right? That's beyond comprehension. So we'll just say a lot of cells. But here's the really just mind-boggling part of it all. All those cells are talking to each other simultaneously. And I mean, you can't even... I understand that you can't picture it. I, I can't picture it. 
but you can just push yourself to the frontier of that idea, the edge of your mind, and just think about how the body is, how the body works as a whole. And you'll see that there's so much going on. The, the simplistic idea of taking a drug or having surgery to control these things is just ridiculous. When you c begin to even just get close to the idea that the body is so exquisitely interconnected and intelligent and responsive, I mean, we can't really get to where it's at, but what the truth is, but we can, we can push ourselves to the edge of it. You'll know that you don't ever want to monkey with the system, barely want to eat. I know we have to eat, but once you really start to understand what's happening here, you'll be really, really careful what you eat. Not to mention how you think and how you feel and all the different ways we control our lives. We control our lives on so many levels and nobody's telling us this. Doctors are not telling us this. The model's not telling us this. We control our lives in so many ways. Not perhaps and always because we live together, so you have to breathe the air and drink the water, but we control our lives, our realities, our perceptions, our chemistry, our biochemistry to such a great degree. That is the most amazingly optimistic and reassuring message that you can ever tell somebody who's sick. We control our lives. You control your life. If you're sick, you control your life and how your biochemistry shows up to a large degree. And then you go into this, these people say, oh, are you blaming the victim here? No, I'm not blaming anybody. It's not blame, it's responsibility. We have an ability to respond. We have an ability to respond to our high blood pressure. We have an ability to respond to our belly aches. We have an ability to respond to our psoriasis. We have an ability to respond to our heart disease and our diabetes and our other inflammatory issues. Inflammation is behind it all. Inflammation is a defensive response. A defensive response means there's an offending agent. Just follow that logic. And, and, and I know it's not totally intuitive, but if you think about it, it, it for a couple seconds, it will make perfect sense. Inflammation is defense. It's an airbag. The, the defensive response, the airbag response only occurs if there's, an, if there's some kind of damage or trauma or invasion or something negative, an offending agent. Control the offending agent. You will control the defensive response. You will control inflammation. It's really that simple. And the main source into the bloodstream, which is where the body becomes contaminated, is through the digestive system. And that's why food is so important. As far as estrogen goes, okay, estrogen number one is a stressor. It's part of the body's stress response. Number two, estrogen has to be eliminated through the digestive tract, through bile and the gallbladder and the intestine. So if you have an estrogenic health issue, then you probably are dealing with a problem associated with getting rid of estrogen or somehow processing it. That means that some, there's no doctor involved here. That means bowel movements. That means good digestion. That means essential fats. That means bile and, and fat absorption. That means probiotics. There's nothing in the doctor's bag, magical bag of tricks that can take care of any of these things the way it's good nutritional strategies can. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lots of, we got all our lines open. 844-236-6010. So now's the time to get on board if you want to chat. If we left you on hold in the past. I hate people. I hate leaving people on hold, but it, inevitably it occurs because you guys always call at the last minute. So give us a shout. Fill up the boards, 844-236-6010, we'll get your calls. Uh, let's see, got a couple interesting stories here. Magnesium for insomnia. Most, you know, I, I'm surprised at how many people know that magnesium can be very helpful with, for insomnia. I, I attribute that not to the fact that people know about a lot about magnesium or about nutrition, but that people know a lot about insomnia because it's a nasty and very, very common and unpleasant health challenge. Now, I, I don't know if I would call it a health challenge challenge from a physical standpoint, but it sure is problematic. Uh, and it can be related to uh, uh, physical kinds of things, but it's not primarily a physical problem, insomnia. Insomnia is primarily a mental health problem. Yes, there are certain nutrients that can make you feel drowsy. And yes, if you're producing lots of stress hormone and you ant antagonize the stress hormone, you could probably, it'll help you fall asleep. 
Uh, magnesium does have a relaxing effect, and if you're over-calciumized, the way many people are because we get calcium in dairy, and most people drink a lot of dairy or ingest a lot of dairy, and calcium is uh, much easier to find. Magnesium is really, uh, it, calcium tends to be found in high-protein high protein foods, building foods. Magnesium is found in veggies, uh, nuts and veggies. It's a plant. It's found in abundance in plants. It's also found in organ meats, I suppose. But really, you want to think. You can think of magnesium as more plant-based than than calcium. Thus, many people, because we don't eat a lot of veggies, are getting uh, more calcium than magnesium, and magnesium can be out of balance, and that can be a problem. So, magnesium deficiencies and magnesium out of balance, and supplementing with magnesium before you go to bed, that can have a relaxing effect. GABA, G-A-B-A, can have a relaxing effect. 5-HTP, tryptophan, can have a relaxing effect. You could do things like chamomile tea. That has a relaxing effect. Uh, but for the most part, slow deep breathing maybe has a nice relaxing effect. But slow deep breathing kind of crosses, is a bridge between the mental and the psychological. The reason insomnia is such a problem is not as much, in my opinion, not as much physically as it is psychological. It's... it's an inelegant use of the brain an or the mind, depending on how you look at it. And this is really where the world of nutrition and exercise and physical, the physical world that we talk about in this program a lot meets the, sp the spiritual and psychological world. There's like a bridge and it happens and not surprisingly at sleep because that's when we kind of lose our physicality and enter into another consciousness, whatever you want to call it. So sleep is kind of the interface between the invisible and the visible world, the psychological world and the physical world. So it makes sense that if you have insomnia, you can maybe be able to, to handle it, to do certain things with magnesium and GABA, but you really want to work psychologically. You'll notice that when you fall asleep, uh, if you have a problem sleeping, or if you can't fall asleep, that you're thinking a lot. Now, it's not that so much that you're thinking a lot because we're always thinking, and you're probably not thinking any more than you think during the day, but you're paying attention to your thinking. During the day, we pay attention to our thinking occasionally, and then we go into daydream states and might even fall asleep. If you pay attention to your thinking, you're going to find yourself relaxing. It's when you believe you're thinking. It's like your thinking is another person, and you're listening to your thinking. That's a lot different when you're or paying attention to your thinking or, or, or uh, listening to the message of your thinking, not watching the words come out. If you watch the words come out and thinking, you will immediately start to relax. That's called watching your thinking. It's a very subtle distinction between watching your thinking and believing your thinking. You don't want to believe your thinking. It's a really cool book uh, by a guy named Michael Singer called The Untethered Soul. I think it's called The Untethered Soul. Or maybe it's The Untethered Mind. Untethered something, but it's an awesome book. And he talks a lot about how the thinking aspect is like a person in your head. And we listen to this crazy person in our head. When you fall, we, the person in your head is talking all the time. But you don't always pay attention because we can distract ourselves with things. That's why we watch TV. That's why we eat. That's why we have sex. That's why we have all of our addictions. It's because we don't want to have to listen to the thinking. But guess what happens? When you fall asleep, none of those things are true. When you're starting to fall asleep, you can't distract yourself, so you force yourself to pay attention to your thinking, and you go nuts. And if you're not just listening to your thinking, but believing your thinking, you will go nuts. You'll go crazy, and you won't be able to sleep. You have to learn how to handle that psycho psychological aspect, and here's the trick. The mind needs something to focus on. The mind needs something to focus on. If it doesn't have anything to focus on, it's going to focus on thoughts. This is why breathing is so helpful, slow, deep breathing, SDR breathing, because now your mind can focus on SDR breathing. This is why we count sheep. Why do you think they tell you to count sheep? One, two, three, what are you doing? You're giving your mind something to do. You got to give your mind something to do. Progressive relaxation, starting with your toes and working all the way up to your top of your head, your scalp, including your ears and your face. All of that gives the mind something to do. You've got to learn to give the mind something to do that isn't, th that isn't listening to thoughts. Now, I say listening to thoughts. That's, I mean, there's two ways you can listen to thoughts. You can just watch them go by or you can believe them. You want to watch them go by. And watching them go, go by without believing them, that'll put you to sleep too. You've got to learn to give the mind something to do. If the mind is not ha doesn't have anything to do, it's going to start 
paying attention to or believing the thoughts and you'll go crazy and you won't be able to sleep. It might happen in the middle of the night and then you'll wake up in the middle of the night. You won't be able to go back to sleep. Give your mind something to do. Have you noticed that you'll fall asleep when you're watching TV? Because now your mind has something to do. You got to give the mind something to do. So yes, magnesium can be helpful in, in this study. Um, they say at magne uh, insomnia is one of the symptoms of magnesium deficiency. That's true. That doesn't necessarily mean that all insomnia is due to magnesium deficiency. All right, vitamin D for juvenile onset SLE. SLE, systemic lupus erythromatosis. SLE is a very nasty connective tissue disease, autoimmune disease. And when a kid has it, it's ultra tragic and ultra easy. Let me say that again. When a kid has SLE, it's ultra tragic and ultra easy to reverse because the kid has a very powerful building or anabolic system that an adult doesn't have, that adults have damaged, that adults have suppressed. So it's really easy to treat these kinds of conditions in kids. First of all, you gotta change the foods. This, is a, this particular study is done on vitamin D, 45 patients, average age 19 years old, with juvenile onset SLE were randomly assigned to receive either 50,000 IU of vitamin D3 or a placebo once a week for 24 weeks. Medications stayed, they didn't change the medications on any of the stuff. It turns out that serum concentrations of 25 hydroxy vitamin D, vitamin D, were low in a high percentage of SLE patients. And according to these researchers, it would be prudent to monitor uh, urinary, uh, urinary vitamin D levels periodically in SLE patients, systemic lupus patients, who are being treated with medication. Now, I'm not saying that vitamin D will cure autoimmune disease, but I am saying that vitamin D plays a major, major role in strengthening the immune response and making it more powerful and more effective. And where do we get vitamin D from? The sun. Now you'll also read studies that tell you about how the sun can suppress immunity and cause cancer. And that's only true in deficient states and in over, uh, in, in, uh, when, when there's overexposure to ultraviolet rays. But a little bit of sun or just the right amount of sun is very important for the immune system. All right, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. I just want to finish up what I was talking about, and we'll get your calls here in just a sec. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking about vitamin D and SLE, systemic lupus erythrom erythromatosis. Is just think of connective tissue, autoimmune disease. Uh, and vitamin D is involved because vitamin D is a very important immune system vitamin. Vitamin D helps, helps us uh, process calcium. It's also involved in estrogen processing, and it's a steroid. It's very similar to estrogen, actually, vitamin D. Vitamin D is a building substance. It's a life management substance, like estrogen is a life management substance. So it makes perfect sense that uh, using vitamin D uh, or taking it in a high, high uh, dosage the way they did in this study or just getting it from the sun would be very supportive for the immune system. I think vitamin D from the sun is the best form of vitamin D. This, this is why you do not want to be a heliophobe, be afraid of the sun. I'm going to be doing a talk today about the importance of the sun and also photo damage in my lab. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've been, uh, I've been talking about the importance of the sun and the dangers of sunscreens, which, by the way, amplify many sunscreens, amplify the estrogen response. Estrogen is already pro-inflammatory. And many sunscreen ingredients act like estrogen in the inflammatory unpleasant sense they act like super estrogen I'm telling you folks in 20 years they're going to be you're going to be hearing all kinds of stuff about sunscreens it's already happening hawaii banned them for their why did why do you think hawaii banned them in the for for uh, people swimming in, in their water in the beaches because it kills the coral yes the same stuff that we rub on our bodies i saw this when i was a uh, had my compounding pharmacy i remember the first time i saw this I had a, a compounding pharmacy where ha I made skincare products for patients, and I got a, I was starting to get some prescriptions for sunscreen, so I had to order some sunscreens in. And they had a skull and crossbones on them. I started doing some research. I'm like, this stuff is deadly. It's industrial waste. These sunscreens that everybody, including medical professionals, encourage us to rub on our skin in higher and higher amounts and concentrations. It's crazy, and. While we talk about the toxicity, we don't talk about the estrogenicity that much. And yes, they're estrogenic and they will amplify the estrogenic response. They will increase skin inflammation and they will age you. 
And you don't need a study to show it. You just need to know chemistry. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to our friend, Zoreda in Florida. Zoreda, I hope I said Hello, Ben. Hello, Zoreda. What's going on in FLA? Where, are you in Southern Florida? Are you in Miami? St. Augustine. You're in St. Augustine. That's like St. Petersburg Correct. area, isn't it? Or is it south? No, that's in the Jacksonville area. Jacksonville area. Okay, St. Augustine. Yes. Well, what's the going on today? The oldest city in the United States. Is it the um, oldest city in the... Wait, wait, don't go away. It's the oldest city in the yes. United States, St. Augustine? Yes, yes it is. So yes, like, what, the 1600s or something? Or late 1500s? Well, I know it uh, was um, celebrated 450 years, a couple of years ago, so yes. Wow, the Spanish came over to Florida. I heard that the, they were so mean to the Indians, the Indians put a curse on Florida. Did you ever hear that story? No, I didn't. That's a, that's a <laughs> Good story. to know, no. I don't well, know if it's true. I just heard that. All right, what's going on today in uh, Jacksonville well, and St. The Augustine? reason that I'm calling is that I, I wanted to get your input about CBD oil because awesome it's stuff. a miracle supplement. It's not. A, it's, it is a miracle. <laughs> All right, thank you. I appreciate you asking me that question because I'm a I'm a fan. Put it that way. The stuff okay. is a miracle. The stuff's a miracle. Yes, but it's only a miracle like aspirin is a miracle. You know, aspirin. If we discovered it today, we would say it was a miracle because it's good for so many different things and has so, such a little toxicity. The reason aspirin is good for so many things and has such little toxicity is because the human body has evolved with aspirin. Not exactly aspirin, but plant substances that are similar to aspirin. So we know how to handle aspirin or plant substances that are similar to aspirin. And so aspirin has a little crossover with n normal biochemistry. CBD is the same way. <clears throat> Excuse me. CBD and aspirin both work at fundamental places in the body that affect lots of other systems. So because aspirin works at the, uh, a certain fundamental hormone level, <clears throat> excuse me, it can thin the blood, it has anti-inflammatory properties, it can improve uh, detox, it can improve toxicity or improve detoxification. It's got lots of really interesting properties because it works at a fundamental level. CBD is the same way, even more than aspirin though. Because aspirin, it's, aspirin is technically acetyl salicylic acid, ASA, acetyl salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is an element that's found in plants throughout the plant kingdom, and so we evolved with it. So that makes aspirin relatively non-toxic and relatively multifunctional. But CBD, that's not like a plant substance that's similar to a human substance and just been, the molecule's been tweaked. That is something that your body makes. Your body makes CBD. It is a fundamental hormone in the body a fundamental steroid chemical, steroid-like chemical. I'm pretty sure it's a steroid-like chemical. I gotta think about that. In any case, it's a fundamental hormone-like chemical, all right? It's a fundamental okay. fatty chemical. It's not quite a steroid, that's a little exaggeration, but it's a fundamental fatty chemical in the body that does lots of things. And so when you take CBD orally, for example, your, your body doesn't know once it gets into the bloodstream that that was a supplement, it just thinks CBD levels went up. And when CBD levels go up, you feel better. I could tell you all the different ways you feel better from relaxing for, to helping you fall asleep, to relaxing anxiety issues, to muscle relaxation, to immune support, to helping you digest your food. I mean, I could tell you all the different ways it works, but just suffice it to say that CBD will make you feel better. Now, you can take, you can take too much, and you might not feel better if you take too much, but there's a sweet spot. And in fact, that sweet spot where CBD makes you feel better is closer to a supplement than it is to a medication. It's closer to, it's not exactly a supplement, but it, because it's not essential, but it's close. If you want to up, upregulate your own CBD, and by the way, there is a thing called CBD deficiency. It's a thing. You can be deficient in CBD. You cannot be making enough CBD, in which case you may have problems with things like anxiety and, and inflammation and pain. I'm not saying it's a cause of any of these things, but I am saying that CBD deficiency is real and it comes from problems with fat, uh, uh, processing fats because ultimately CBD comes from essential fatty acids. Did you hear that, my dear? Yes. That's all, that's extremely important information. CBD comes from EFAs. So if you're not getting EFAs or you're not processing EFAs or you got a bile problem or gallbladder problem or intestinal problem, all the different ways the fat that we talk about pretty much every day on the bright side, all the different ways the fat system gets tweaked, fat absorption, fat metabolism, all the fatty parts, 
fatty uh, processing parts of the body. Uh, that it c- it can most certainly account for CBD deficiencies, which can be um, addressed by supplementing with CBD. And if you are deficient and you start taking CBD orally, you'll notice time results. And a lot of people do. So I'm a fan. And I believe in 100 years, it'll be like the asp- like aspirin is today. Go ahead, Zarina. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, this is good because I have been taking it for a few months and I just wanted to know. And I also wanted to know. What do you notice? You tell me. You tell me. What do you notice? Well, I don't know if you recall the first time I called you was because I was having a problem with high blood pressure. Yeah. And I got it as well. So I started taking it at that time to avoid taking medication for the high blood pressure. And? And I don't know if it was the CBD or not, but my Uh. blood pressure. It's normal. Okay, and well, I, I would tell you to stop I, taking the CBD and see. I would tell you to stop taking the CBD and see what happens, just to test it. But I don't think you should do that. That's not a good idea. Yeah, so <laughs> that was fun, and also my blood sugar has improved a lot. And and during this time, all of those, both of those, I should say, uh, high uh-huh. blood pressure and blood sugar control. In fact, blood sugar control for diabetics that's one of the main areas of study of the power of these cannabinoids, not necessarily CBD, but all the cannabinoids. And drug companies are studying the cannabinoids uh, really intensely for their ability to control blood sugar and, uh, and uh, keep diabe- uh, mitigate some of the signs or the side effects of diabetes. So that is an area of focus of CBD. Uh, high blood pressure I hadn't heard, but it makes perfect sense. It just has a relaxing effect on the body in general. Now, you can't overdo it. You can't overdo it. But other than that, you'll feel crappy. You'll feel tired. You just won't have enough, a lot of energy. You'll know if you overdo it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful thing about it is you'll know if you overdid it because it's got such uh, dramatic psychological effects. Go ahead. Is there um, a a possibility that it may not interact well with other medications? Um. It's unlikely, but yeah, anything's possible. You definitely want, when you're using CBD, you want to tell your doctor what you're doing. And if he tells yeah. you not to take the CBD, I find another doctor. I wouldn't pay attention to him personally. Oh, it's no, just me. I, I told my doctor and he was okay with it. Yeah, he doesn't have an option. If, I, if it was me, I, you know, when we say doctor orders and the doctor tells us to do something, and you, you could fire your doctor. Your doctor's not paying you, you're paying your doctor. <laughs> I know. Hey, Zareda, I, I, I got to go. Thanks for your call. Appreciate okay, it. Have a beautiful you. day. Yeah. All right, take care. I am a fan of CBD. Sorry if we left you on hold. You got to call early, you guys. And because that's it. We're out of time. We'll be back tomorrow on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.